That's a good workout. Ah, uh, yeah, but I'm so tired though. At least you did it with me, otherwise I might not have done it at all. You're welcome. <laughs> Actually, it's a good thing we worked out today because it'll help me prepare for the competition. Oh yeah, your competition! How are you feeling about that? Well, I'm actually kind of scared because all the other kids that are joining are really good. What if I fail? What if I make a mistake? Aw, Gav, I know that going into a new competition can be really scary. In fact, we all feel scared sometimes. I'm actually trying out for my school play soon and that's kind of scary too. Do you guys feel that way sometimes? Maybe you're going to a new school and you don't know what to expect. Maybe you're going to move to a new house, but you don't want to leave your old one. Or maybe you're going to study a new subject and you're scared of failing the test. They can be scary because they seem so big. Hey, that's what we can talk about today. Um, Chichi, oh. this is a really big rock. I wonder yeah. what it means. Hey, I actually have an idea. Let's find out what this means together. I'm at the Sophie. But I like to call her Chichi. <laughs> yep, he sure does. And you can call him Kuya Gavin. And we are here today in Next, Next Gen, Gen Live. Live. You know, that rock reminded me of a story in the Bible that involved Joshua and the Israelites. Which story? The one in Joshua chapters 3 and 4. Let's jump into the story together. After the spies left Jericho, they told everything that had happened to Joshua. Confident in the Lord, Joshua was ready to conquer Jericho. However, Joshua and the Israelites had to pass through the Jordan River to get to Jericho. Wait, that's not so bad, right? I mean, it's just a river. Well, at that time of year, the Jordan River was at harvest time. It's flooded, so not only was the water very deep, it must have been a rushing river too. Wow, that's really scary. The people might yeah. be swept away. Yeah, what would you do if you were them? Uh, I feel like this is a trick question. No, it's not. <laughs> Let's ask the kids through a pop quiz. <gasps> question number one. What would you do if you were Joshua and the Israelites? Would you A. Run away and hide? B. Trust in God to help you? Or C. Get a swimsuit and jump in the river? Well, let's see what Joshua and the Israelites did. Letter B. Joshua had faith in the Lord that he would help them. The Lord also told him that he would be with Joshua just as he was with Moses. The Lord commanded Joshua to instruct the priests to carry the Ark of the Covenant. They were to go to the edge of the Jordan River and stand in the water. Wait, what's the Ark of the Covenant again? The Ark of the Covenant was the greatest treasure of the Israelites. It was a big golden box where God will always be and a holy symbol of God's presence and power. It was so precious that only the Levite priests were allowed to carry it. Wow, so if they had the Ark of the Covenant with them, it meant that God's presence and power were with them and He would do great things for them. You got it, Gavin! This is what happened next. When the priest stepped into the water, the water stopped flowing. It parted, just like how the Red Sea did with Moses. Anywhere the priests walked, the water would stop flowing. So everyone crossed on dry ground to the other side safely. God is so great. He led the steps of the Israelites. He truly is. Oh wait, what does that rock have to do with this story? Oh, I almost forgot to include that! The rock is actually a reminder of what God did for them. Joshua called for one man from each of the 12 tribes to gather stones from the middle of the Jordan River. The 12 stones were put on top of each other in the middle of the Jordan River. Until today, it still stands 
as a reminder of God's faithfulness and power. What an amazing story! Yes! Hmm. Let's see if they understand the lesson. Question number two. Who should we put our faith in to lead the way? A. God B. Joshua or C. Our parents That's right! It's letter A. God We should put our faith in God. Oh, I just remembered how God led the way for me before. Really? How so, Gavin? Well, you know how I raced in obstacle courses? Well, do you remember the most recent race I went in? Oh yeah, I remember you practiced so hard for that. Even though I practiced so hard for the competition, I was still so scared. The other competitors were really, really good. I kept thinking, what if I slip? What if I fall? But in the end, when I paused to pray, God reminded me to not compare myself to others and instead have fun, do my best, and just trust Him no matter what happens. It's so important to pause and pray so that we can let God lead us. After that, God gave me the strength and the courage to do my best in the competition. My run in the competition was one of the best runs I've ever done. God is so good because He showed me how to do my best for Him and have fun at the same time. He even let me win gold with the fastest time in the competition. I let God lead my way and He didn't let me down. So, I can trust God with my future competitions. I really love recalling how God was and is good in our lives. It's so amazing how God led the Israelites to cross the Jordan River and how He continues to lead us every single day. We can really trust Him to lead the way. That's what our big idea is for today. God will lead the way. Our memory verse also tells us this. Let's do it with actions. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. We can't trust someone to lead the way if we don't know who they are. God is holy and perfect. He made you and me, so He knows all of us, inside and out. Sadly, we didn't trust Him and we sinned against Him, separating us from a holy God. But the Lord's grace is amazing! It is! He sent Jesus, His beloved Son, to die on the cross for our sins and rise up from the grave after three days. Through Jesus, we are forgiven of our sins, and we can be together with God again. If you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can be sure that the Lord will lead the way. Would you like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If yes, pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord, I know that I have sinned, and I know that Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe that He saved me and is the Lord over all. Please forgive me of my sin and come into my heart. I know that You will lead me into the way that is best for me. Help me to follow You. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. If you just prayed that prayer, then congratulations! You are now a child of God! Welcome to God's family! Share your thoughts in the victorious Padlet page by scanning the QR code. What's that? I'm not sure. Wow, that's loud. Very, very loud. <laughs> we will find out more about this in the next episode of Next, next Gen, Gen Live! Live. Bye! Hey, Next Gen families! How about spending time sharing with each other your answers to our discussion questions? Because a family that shares with each other stays together and grows in the Lord together. Let's use these questions to help us discuss what we learned in today's lesson. Have, Have a great, great time, time discussing! discussing.
want to be part of a next-gen small group via Zoom? If you are 7 to 12 years old, you can be part of an online squad or small group by registering on the link in the description or scanning this QR code. Hope to see you there!